Welcome back, Nick Lane. This is Comic Corner Classics, less known classics. This episode is number 1230. And double shot number 12, no, 1124. Yep. Now, this one, surprisingly, is going to discuss two Wonder Woman trades. Yep. First up, it is. The first trade that collects G. Willow Wilson's run. Now you're probably thinking, now this book contains issues, I think it's like 56, no, 50, where is it, there we go, 58 to 65. You're probably asking the question, where in the world is 56 and 57? They're in this book. That's where they are. Yes, I am finally up to basically past for the Wonder Woman title, past the witching hour. Now, for some reason, DC decided to relaunch the graphic novel numbering once you will the Wilson took over. Yeah, but here's the thing. They didn't relaunch the internal numbering of the actual individual series because even they are not that stupid as Marvel to have that very stupid policy to whenever a new writer comes on the book, we have to hit that restart button for the main series and restart number one. DC doesn't do that. Nope, it doesn't do that at all. Not like I think it, they've had a series occasionally to read the start number one, but not for every single time a new writer comes in the book, we have to hit the restart button. Here, they just restarted the graphic numbering. So technically, this is the 10th volume of the one graphic novel series that collects issues from volume 5. This is the 10th one. And yes, this does start G. Willow Wilson's run. This starts some stuff in here that's a follow-up to basically two runs. Yes. Basically, the stuff that starts in here is mostly follow-up with stuff with Greg Rucka's run and James Robinson's run. Because the first thing you see is that first you open up the mascara, where you have things going on, and then we cut to the underground where we see Grell and Ares. Yeah, Ares has been there. Apparently, Ares, this is according to Greg Ruckus' run, Ares was in prison here for some reason. Despite the fact, if we're the previous one of the series, Wonder Woman chopped up this man's head. Here, he's alive and well. And he's here with Grill. You're probably thinking, how the heck did Grill get there? Ray James Thomas is awesome around the book. So, I appreciate, though, that as soon as... Uh, G. Willow Wilson starts her run. She follows up with some stuff that was said basically for Greg Ruckus' one and for James Roberts' one, which that's excellent. That's an excellent idea for a writer to do. So, Grell and Ares basically really want to get out of the, basically their imprisonment. So, Grell's be he, Ares' idea is to just kill him. Yep, just slice his chest. And apparently, yeah, that apparently causes him to be released. For some reason. And Themyscira apparently is... Well... Like apparently she's been freed. Like the whole island has apparently been destroyed. So this becomes a plot thread... Throughout the entirety of Will Wilson's run. And then we cut to... Virginia. One woman is waking up at... In, well, in bed with... Well, Steve Trevor. Now, fun fact. If you read the final issue of... Greg Ruckus' run... Basically... Greg Rucka basically did something no writers ever did. Have an issue end where it's very much implied that that's Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor had sex. How? The clothes on the floor. That's how I know. So she's basically dreaming about. She's basically losing possibly losing Steve, but nope. And then she's basically called away. And then all of a sudden we have meanwhile stuff going on in another country, and Wonder Woman basically helps out and just deals with stuff doing going on there. And then she comes across frickin' Ares, who has been released. And she asks the obvious question in the very next issue, in the of issue, in the start of issue 52, like, How are you free? You were imprisoned. Yes. He says, A terrible life. A rebirth. Yeah, he was sliced by Grill. And apparently he forgot. Also, apparently, according to the way this arc basically shows up, apparently, uh, Olympus has disappeared. Yeah, Olympus. Yes, Mount Olympus has completely disappeared. So we have these refugees basically in the real regular world. 
And we have a few issues of basically Wonder Woman fighting Ares, because of course we have these two fight, because Ares is basically Wonder Woman's primary enemies. As a matter of fact, if you read the first arc of George Perez is also for Wonder Woman, he's the first villain that she fights. And of course, well, we have some various shooting going on. And of course, Ares basically, this is something he just fired briefly. He says he really wants to go over a new league. He wants to basically seek redemption. So we see this. Yeah, and then we cut to seeing Aphrodite, the goddess of wisdom, with two women that kind of look like uh, Aquarius versions of, of Poison Ivy. Yep, Aphrodite's in this book. And she meets Steve Trevor, who heals them. Yes. Aphrodite, the goddess of love. <laughs> yep. And we have these two guys just arguing. All of a sudden, Wonder Woman shows up. Yeah, it turns out this is Action UK, which, fun fact, I believe that the next... I, I believe at one point, Wonder Woman was actually in the UK at one point in the comic books. Let's see. I think it may have been during Perez's one. She tends to move around a lot. Depends on what writer wants to do. So it reunites with Steve. And sees Aphrodite's there, and she's like, "Why Aphrodite?" Yeah, and she just basically bows to her because she's one of her deities. And well, she kind of becomes a very briefly a supporting character in the book, thanks to basically Aphrodite being brought in. Yep, and then Ares basically goes on a rampage because of course he does. Yep, and of course one of them fights him. And of course, well, they talk about some various peace talks, and they were still with no problem at all. And then, of course, of course, then, then we have the next story arc in here, The Grudge. Well, it's basically New World, dealing with the aftermath of the apparent disappearance of both Mount Olympus and Damascara, where apparently the mythological creatures of the Minotaur, Pegasus, and a goat man is in modern day. And, of course, Wonder Woman basically has him living in Washington, D.C. Yep. And they'll basically have it at a bar. And then all of a sudden they go to a restaurant afterwards where apparently, you know, these these three creatures have no money. And then, of course, they talk to an old man waiter. And then they're given a beautiful waiter. Yep. Where apparently they go crazy, though. He's, he's able to stop. Yep. And then, of course, well, he takes the... They got the <laughs> takes the waitress with her with him for some reason. Yeah, because apparently some romance. So we have it where the goat man apparently has developed a, a crush on a, a beautiful waitress, a black waitress, mind you. Yes. Yeah, but then two minotaurs just talk, and then we cut to the mansion of Veronica Kale. Yes, Veronica Kale is here, because of course Veronica Kale is here. Now. This is something quite interesting, though. This is the first Ron Kills period in this book since Greg Rucka wrapped up his run for the book back in 2017. These issues actually came out just like a year ago. It's been the first time in a couple years. And she talks to Nemesis, the goddess of grudges. Yes. Now, this is not like a, a traditional goddess. Since when is a goddess basically dressed like she's a dominatrix of apocalypse and had these tubes? And apparently, one of knows who this woman is. Now, you're thinking, Nemesis. You're probably thinking, wait, isn't that the guy who briefly dated Wonder Woman during the Gail Simone run? No, this is a completely unrelated character, just with a similar name. And we cut to, basically, Wonder Woman Steve Trevor's house, where Steve Trevor's come from, her, from his wound, basically be tended to by the beautiful Wonder Woman. And then, of course, <laughs> Aphrodite is apparently just living with them. And, basically... Like, and, and basically, Steve Trevor's one asks this, not Wonder Woman. Steve Trevor's like, do we have to keep her around? After that, he's nowhere else to go. And, he's, and she's like, and he's like, it's really uncomfortable having the goddess of love wander around passing judgment on your private life. It puts a lot of pressure on a guy. <laughs> yep. And oh, oh my, and it's a Pegasus. Like, yeah, it's basically it's Cadmus. Yeah, this this Pegasus name is Cadmus for some reason. So, yeah, yeah. So let me get my weapons. And apparently, Steve Trevor's got the weapons right there. Gives her and gives her goes. He gives a kiss on the forehead. She apparently changes clothes off panel. And we see the aftermath of a big humongous crater in DC, caused by Nemesis. Yes, Nemesis. And she basically starts a fight with her. Yep. 
yeah, last story arc, it was Ares. Now it's freaking Nemesis. And Veronica is basically having a blast with this. Seeing Wonder Woman fight, apparently, Nemesis, who apparently works for Veronica Kale. Yeah, it was all publicity, so they could basically get back her. Of course, she also hit it with, with, a, with a lawsuit. Yep, a freaking lawsuit. Yep, and then, of course, we have the straw and the... And we have... Then we see Aphrodite wearing this very skimpy attire. And... And here's the thing. Steve Trevor is very nervous around the Goddess of Love for a very good reason. Not only because she's hot, but, but because of her title, the Goddess of Love. And luckily enough that Aphrodite does not start hitting on him. That's why I think she's beautiful. So... She says, like, apparently the, the entire room has been destroyed somehow. It's, it's a big mystery. So... So basically, C. Trevor stays at the house, and then she comes to a cave where she comes across, apparently, some pictures. So, yeah, because, well, Themis is the goddess of grudges, and then, of course, she apparently fights her, and then, then she goes back to Veronica Hill's place, where she confronts her. It's like, like, tell her, did she actually bite her? He said, yeah, because apparently it's poison. And then she tells what happened to Mascara. Like, uh, like apparently, because he's like, you get, she's furious with him because what happened to her daughter with Mascara. He's like, your daughter was safe with Mascara until Mascara suddenly became undone. I promise you, I'll, I'll find out what happened to your child. And if, but I can't do that if I'm stuck in a courtroom for the next six months. Drop the suit, please. If you think about it, just floating above the atmosphere. And then she just hugs her. Yes, she hugs Veronica Kale. And she's like, just want to be safe. Can't stop thinking about it. Her being alone and scared. Now they're seeing what's happening. I'll find, I'll find, well, it's her. She's basically uh, Veronica Kale's daughter. What will you do? I will search. I will comb the earth and from one end of the earth to the other and have answers. They have agreement. Find her. I will draw the suit for now, but I'm watching. Like, okay, that's quite interesting. So we have some plot thread. And then we have Aphrodite basically going to Wonder Woman to go search. And that's where the trade ends. Interesting start to the run. Though I shall point out, though, that the covers are all done by Terry and Rachel Dodson. Yep, this is this is more of their artwork. Yeah, this is from the second trade, Love is Battlefield. I get the first trade a 9 out of 10. Great starts to the run. And here's the here's next volume from G. Willow Wilson. The artwork in here is done by Corey North, Love as a Battlefield. This book contains issues 70, 66 to 70, 73. We're getting very close to wrapping up G. Willow Wilson's run. Her run was not very long. It was only like eight, it was like 30 issues. Though I should point out, it is slightly longer than the last two guys basically who wrote the book, namely Greg Rucka and James Robinson. Basically, Robinson was in the book for 20 issues. Rocket was in the book for 24. There was a couple in-between writers. Like, first it was the Heart of the Amazon storyline, which is basically a quick five-parter. Just a filler storyline, some of you might think of it. And Robinson to go over, which his run was amazing. And for I could tell that you will was this one. Oh, yeah, and I could, you could tell by the cover who appears in the storyline. Giganta! Yes, Giganta. This is the first that one of them has a counter Giganta that I can think of in the Wonder Woman book since JMS's run for the book back. I mean, this is the first time she's appeared in the book. I think this DJ just came out just, I think it was late last year, I think it was. Actually, I think it was just this year. This is the first time appearing in the books since 2011. So it's been eight years since appearing in the book. Now, as for the last time she fought, well, basically picking up face face with Wonder Woman, the last time that happened was back in 2013, back in 20, let's see, I think it was 2014, I think it was, yeah, it was just after Superman Doom wrapped up, that was the last thing they counted to the, basically an odd panel fight between two of the characters, and the storyline is all about the Titans, yep, so it's called Giant War, so Titans are rampaging, and of course, then she goes to Amanda Waller, yes, Amanda Waller, the head of the Suicide Squad, and who does she ask for? Giganta. 
which I love the fact that she's back in her classic garb. I love this attire for Giganta. It's pretty much, from what I can tell, her outfit she had in the 2000s. Yeah, it's quite interesting, though, that they, they keep her in this outfit because this is a good look for, for Giganta. Not the cave lady look that apparently John Byrne decided to give her briefly for some reason. Yeah, just over like, like a loincloth. I'm like, what the heck is this? This outfit is great. She also wore this outfit during the uh, All New Adam series. Yep, and it's great to see her back in this book. And then she's basically here uh, as a partnership with Wonder Woman to take on the Titans. Yep, the Titans. Not the Teen Titans. Oh no. And not the Adult Titans. I'm talking about the Titans of Greek myth. Yep, that's pretty much what they're doing. And, well, because the fact that Giganta is the only woman who can go giant, who can basically battle the Titans one-on-one -on, -one on even footing, that's why she basically briefed free for prison. And, not a bad idea. Though she gets her butt handed to her by the Rock Titan. Yep, and then she continues fighting the damn thing. And meanwhile, the mythical creatures are basically traveling with the female waitress they countered back in the previous arc. And they just chill around. Of course, we have apparently the goat man starting apparently a romance with the, with the waitress. And they start swimming. And then she... They, all right, apparently her name is Mag. And apparently she's found a sword. Yep, this sword looks kind of like... I don't know if it could be Excalibur. I have no idea what it is. But I love the imagery, basically, when she does is where she sticks her arm out of the water with the sword. Yeah, that's similar to Lady of the Lake from King Arthur myth. Wow, that's quite something. Like, here she does this. Like, yeah, anybody could tell that's basically that's that's basically the symbol when people think of the Lady of the Lake from King Arthur myth. And we have more fighting. And, of course, I love this image of basically one woman just sitting on Gigantha's shoulder. Yeah, that's quite interesting, though. As far as I can tell, Wonder Woman has never done this before prior to the storyline. Sit on Giganta's shoulder. Yeah, never done before. Though I highly doubt to do it again. Of course, they continue working together. The fight of the Rock Titan, the, fight, the various Titans, this old storyline. Yeah, and then, of course, they meet up with her and apparently found this magical sword. Which, I think it may be Wonder Woman's one point. And it's like... And apparently, finishing up the Titans, apparently, like, goodbye, Princess. These two, they took two years on my sentence with a squad. Think about what you th think about what I told you before I end up in the other crippled with Ray. Yeah, so she just walks off, and that's it. For Giganta. Yep, interesting way to end that particular storyline. Then we have some other stuff happening, like the story on Love is a Bath. Apparently, Aphrodite is making a whole bunch of people who just basically act really love crazy. Because she can. And, and it's a lot of fighting, and of course, well, apparently it's a bunch of Cupids working for Aphrodite who did it. And they kind of undid what they, what they did, basically, on the love nest thing. Yep, as well as fighting, and then we see apparently this angel who is kind of like the queen of the cupids. And at one point in the, in this in this issue, where she talks to Wonder Woman, she gets really close to her. Yep, let me show up the panel here while talking to Steve Trevor. Let's see if we can find it here. It's a really odd panel to see, especially for the story arc. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, I know it's in here. Let's see. And we also see apparently Maggie's come across the Minotaur. Well, the Minotaur from Greek mythology, not the actual one. Yeah, and here's the panel right here. Well, it looks like this angel woman who's not Aphrodite gets really close to the Wonder Woman. Almost to the point where they could be make where she could easily kiss her, but nope, that doesn't happen because Pegasus basically, you might think, is just blocking her. But <laughs> okay, yep. 
But this whole storyline is mainly about love. Yes, the power of love. If Brother Love was viewing this, he basically was like, oh yeah, this book is awesome. Like, love, love, love. Yep, and of course, the sword starts glowing and they become the creature of this storyline. Yeah. Brought the sword. Of course, she fights alongside her. And, well, that's where the storyline ends. Let's see if I can find what this woman's name is. Because it's not Aphrodite. Let's see if I can find her name here. Let's see. It, and also, we also have this thing here where it looks like, though, that where she basically... Here's another moment, one or two other, another moment, basically, which her hand on one of one's face. And she could easily kiss her if she wanted to. But, nope, she didn't. Okay, her name is Anantelis. That's her name. That's the name of this uh, female Cupid. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this is a interesting storyline. And then we have this one-shot issue. This is done, not done by G. Willow. This is done by Steve Orlando called Queen of the Empress. Where it's like, oh yeah, Empress Apollota and Queen Apollota. Who is Wonder Woman's real mother? Who knows? Basically... Apparently, it's all about Dimension Chi, and this was apparently a place that one would have been to at some point. This is possible place with Amazon, the Amazons are. And then we have Diana. Just protecting, well, basically her, her mother as a child. And, well, just basically it's like a flashback. It's a brief issue. And this is possibly the place where the Themyscira could be, but not really. Yeah, that's what I was searching for it. That was kind of an odd way to end this storyline with issue 73. Not a, not a terrible so not not really. Now, Lo the, the Just War, I thought was really interesting, because I thought it was kind of fun. Love is Battle for the first arc, I thought it was really good. Seeing the Titan team with Giganta for an issue for a story arc was really good. Love is Battle for stuff was interesting, to say the least. Though, I think that the woman in charge of the Cupids, who was not Aphrodite, Aphrodite, it seems as though she really had a thing for, it's implied while reading the issues, this is from my perspective anyway, by the artwork, it's like she really was obsessed with trying to kiss Wonder Woman on the lips. Yep, that's basically what I get from it. I don't know if people might get something from us from it. Like, oh, this woman's so close, you could easily kiss her. Yeah, I can tell by the artwork she really wanted to kiss Wonder Woman. But the thing is, in the rare continuity, it's never stated if Wonder Woman ever had attractions to a woman. I know in fanfic she does, but in actual continuity, not really, no. Some of the Amazons are, are like, if I remember correctly, during the Finch run, Mary the Finch's run, there was a woman who didn't like Wonder Woman being, well, the queen of the Amazons. She was confirmed to be a lesbian, or she was in a lesbian relationship. Yes. So the Wonder Woman comic has experimented with people who are not straight, but Wonder Woman herself, not really, no. She's generally been straight. She likes women, but not to the point where she's basically sleeping with him like she does with Steve Trevor. The only known female characters in DC Comics, no, I mean, like, like, let's just say not straight per se, have been, the only ones I could think have been confirmed like this have been Batwoman. I've heard Harper Rowe is bisexual. Her brother is gay. Let's see. Who else? There's also uh, Harley Quinn is bisexual. So is Poison Ivy. Heck, it was also confirmed in one writer's run that, that Catwoman was bisexual. But that was easily ignored, but the next writer's never brought up again after the one brief kiss that Catwoman had with the other Catwoman during the Giovanni Valentine run. And it's now brought up again. So, not many characters in DC Comics, not many women basically have been outed as a lesbian. But I highly doubt Wonder Woman would ever be outed as a lesbian. Mainly because of the fact that I think DC writers really just like having her be with a guy than having her make out with a woman. That's my gist of it. She probably doesn't mind having, let's say, other characters in her book basically be, be, uh, be like not straight. But Wonder Woman herself? Nope, I have to keep her straight. No matter what. Despite the fact she grew up on an island full of women. Beautiful woman, mind you. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
The one thing that's kind of odd about these issues for G. Willow Wilson for Wonder Woman, Steve Trevor does virtually almost nothing. I mean, he, he does something a little bit when he starts to run, but then during the next couple of stories, he does virtually almost nothing. Yeah, and it's odd, though, that these ish, these trades are quite lengthy, too. Like, the Just War containing just, oh, like, like almost ten issues. This is, like, roughly eight issues, and just for the Just War. The Love as a Battlefield, that is roughly also eight issues as well. That could explain why there hasn't been any trades released for G. Willow Wilson's run. It's possible to say at least. But here's an odd question, though. Why did she leave? Don't know. 30 issues, basically, this series, as far as I can tell, still comes out bi-monthly. comes out twice monthly. Still, it's one of the few titles that still does. That could explain why it's already produced over, over almost 100 issues already. Kind of like how Batman's still doing it, despite the fact that this day, the start of this year, they were going to switch it to monthly when James Tinian started his run. Because of Batman Catwoman. But that book was delayed by an entire year. The first issue just released just this week. I read it. It's actually pretty quite interesting. I'm not going to spoil it here. But. But there's not much else to say about these two trades. From Wonder Woman. And yeah. Now next comic corner. I will be reviewing. Basically two Marvel trades. Yeah. One from a, of a character I haven't reviewed in quite some time on this channel. The other one is another trade series. I've also not reviewed in quite some time, though it's the pendulum trade of one writer's run for the book. Yep. Though there is a few, a couple more like reviews coming where I talk about diddle trades from the Polo app. So, that'll be in the future, okay? But today, there's a handful of reviews I'm going to do. Fire Force, Yes, Sam, I have Dean Princess. And Is It Wrong, Shepard Girls Dungeon? Yes, those three are coming today. And that'd be basically it. Basically, overall, there's about, oh, about three more videos left. Yep. But until you see the next video, bye.